Hi, my name is Wayne Maglio from Maglio's Prime Painting in Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada. My video today is on spraying a textured ceiling by yourself. It's a little tricky and especially you're in a living room full of furniture and I've moved everything out of this living room except for the big items like the china cabinet full of china and the two couches which just wouldn't cram out the door. So uh, I'll show you how I do this and I'm also going to talk about the two deficiencies in the ceiling which is the reason I'm spraying it in the first place. The new owner of the house doesn't like the color. The color is a medium brown and it was sprayed on at some point. The ceiling's about 18 years old and somewhere along the line it was sprayed this medium leathery brown color. And it's only a, a 10 foot vault so it's not a very high ceiling and it tends to really bring it down. Plus uh, behind the masking that you can see there's a lot of uh, mirror. At one end of the wall it's all mirror and that tends to amplify the darkness of the ceiling. So we're going to fix that. These, uh, a almost white, a little bit of a sand tint in the paint just to help it uh, uh, look a little bit nicer and a little different from the rest of the home. But the big problem with this ceiling is actually how it was painted the first time. The contractor never used a sealer and on a new textured ceiling you always want to use a sealer. You know, um, I usually use this uh, Insulex, I get it at Benjamin Moore. It's a fast drying Alkyd sealer. Sure, you got to clean your sprayer. Yeah, it takes a little bit longer, but it provides a good solid block, not only for your finished paint that you're going to put over top of it, a good base for that, but it also is a stain blocker. So if there's anything on the ceiling, any water stain around a light or anything like that, this is going to fix that problem. Now, yes, if you're spraying, you can get away with not using a primer, but this is why we have the suede finish, which is happening here. The, uh, the the paint, when it hit the, the, the virgin texture, you know, that unsealed texture, it soaks in at different, uh, to different degrees all around the room and you get this spotty effect. It doesn't really look uh, like, like it's a mistake. It's not too much paint or it's not, not enough paint. It's just blotchy. And that has to do with the quality of the paint, whether or not it had any sheen to it. But most importantly, it has to do with the fact that it's soaked in at different levels all throughout the ceiling. You know, you could have had a breeze come in a window and that area gets dried faster. A lot of reasons for it. But we want to fix that. Always use a primer. So now that it's already been sealed, the damage is done. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two coats. I'm using this Benjamin Moore Ultra Flat Ceiling Paint. It's totally awesome. The reason for it being awesome is it's a heavy body paint and it dries really quickly. But most importantly, it's completely flat, dead flat. So if there's any imperfections in the ceiling, like a crack that might have been caulked or something that might have been fixed, or an older ceiling where the drywall might be irregular, this is the paint to use because it really does hide a lot. Very, very forgiving paint. My only suggestion is don't put too much on. If you're spraying, make sure you only put a thin mill thickness, especially for your first coat. Because this paint dries fast, if you have too much, the outer surface will dry before it's completely cured underneath, and you'll get a little mud cracking there. And you, you can always look for that around where the wall meets the ceiling, that little crevice there, because sometimes there's a little extra paint in there or on a corner. Uh, so make sure that you're very careful with how much paint you put on. This takes a little bit of trial and error, but once you get it, you'll never want to use any other paint. Fantastic stuff. So you can see what's happening here now is I'm doing my opposing the light uh, uh, coat. Now, it's really important that when you do two coats, you don't travel in the same direction, at least wherever possible. And the reason for that is that if you travel in the same direction, your spray patterns will overlap each other and you still get heavy edges. Or you might get a rooster tail if you, if you uh, turn the gun the wrong way. Uh, or if your pressure isn't set right. So you want to make sure that you do your first coat. I always do it opposing the light. Now coming up in the video is going to be my second coat. And I'm going to do that with the light. You'll see the big windows where the light, the natural light comes in. 
and I want to finish in line with that natural light. That way I crosshatch my pattern over the first coat and when the light comes in the window it follows my, my second coat because I'm traveling in the same direction. That guarantees you're going to get a solid finish. So seal whenever it's not sealed. Your first coat always oppose the light and your second coat spray it with the light. Speaking of lights. Um, now what you're seeing in the video is I'm doing that apex right at the front window there. And uh, this is a good time to, to let you know that when you're spraying alone, you have to really be aware of where your line is. Your spray line is everything. You don't want to snag that on anything. And also, I've seen another painter get, get a puncture in his line from, from yanking it over top of a, a carpet uh, tack. So you want to make sure that you're always aware where your line is. In this case, I've got all the floors obviously covered with drop sheets and all uh, the, the furniture that remained in the room is completely sealed and protected. But I'm also spraying a ceiling, so I'm not looking at the floor. I want to make sure I don't drag my line across the corner of a drop sheet and expose the floor. So I have um, weights. I usually use just paint cans uh, to weight my drop sheets down, but you can tape them if you want. Just make sure when you're working alone, which you always know you're, you're protected, your furniture and your floor, everything that needs to, the masking is protected, and always make sure you know where your line is so you don't trip over your line when you're making your pass. Now you can see I'm making the long pass here with the light, and I'm not triggering uh, too much, but uh, because I'm working alone, I have to be patient and more careful. And so I can't just go flashing back and forth from side to side without triggering at all. You can do that if you're in an empty room or if you've got a linesman running your line for you. But when you're working alone, take your time. And also think about where you're going so that you don't end up painting the same area twice. And when you've got angles like you see in these ceilings, you want, you want to make sure that you're uh, respectful for those angles uh, so that you don't get too much paint or even worse, not enough paint. The last thing that you want to have after you're finished, when you take all your masking down and the room is furnished again, is a big dry spot somewhere. So make sure that you are very careful, you overlap your spray pattern 50%. You know, most painters will do that. They'll overlap 50%. As you can see, I'm using a 30 inch extension. And when I'm spraying, I use it like a pull cue so that I can make sure as evenly as possible, I don't tilt from one side to the other so that my fan gets too close to the ceiling on one side and farther away on the other because that's a, that changes the amount of paint that's applied. And I also want to make sure that, that I'm not jerking and bumping back and forth and trying to keep the same distance. You just do the best you can. But I guarantee if you do two coats in opposing directions, any little flaws that may have been made in the first coat will be uh, covered up in the second coat, especially with the Benjamin Moore ultra white ceiling paint. Now here in Kelowna, BC, we're in a miniature desert called the Okanagan Desert and uh, it gets very, very uh, uh, arid here in the summertime and uh, so our humidity level is quite low, 20%, uh, maybe 25% at the most. Now when, of course when you're spraying a room, uh, the humidity can, can rise drastically. Uh, so you want to moderate that with a, a window open or a vent or use a fan. Uh, it's a really good idea when you spray ceilings that you, you dry them as quickly as possible so that they have a chance to, uh, to seal off and not soak in too much and, and that way you're going to get more of a solid finish. Now, once I'm finished my spray, um, I'm going to check the ceilings and I use a 300 watt incandescent light bulb uh, on a low ceiling like this, 8 to 10 feet, I can hand hold it. On a high ceiling, I'm going to attach it to the end of my extension pole and hold it up there and just make passes across the room so that I can make sure I haven't left any bare spots or my, my uh, mill thickness is equal all throughout the ceiling and that I um, haven't had any um, uh, accidents or, or too much paint applicated uh, to uh, a corner or an angle. Uh, those are the areas you really want to look out for. So always check your work uh, before you take your masking down.
except for a large china cabinet and two couches that just weren't going to go out, out the door. So um, those are protected nicely with plastic. All the floors are covered with drop sheets. <laughs> That's my dog. Um, good timing. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Rango. Um, Rango. <laughs> I'll take it from here. Thank <laughs> you. 